Tom was a glittering hero once more, the pet of the old, the envy of the young. His name even went into a moral print. Village paper magnified him. There were some that believed he would be president yet if he escaped hanging. That last sentence is a little bit sarcastic and dramatic, um, just talking about how he, he had gained quite a bit of fame in the town. As usual, the fickle, unreasoning world took Muff Potter to its bosom and fondled him as lavishly as it had abused him before. But that sort of con conduct is to the world's credit. Therefore, it is not well to find fault with it. Okay, so there, this little that little paragraph is talking about how um, as rude as they had been to Muff Potter before, they are now equally as kind to him because they know he was framed wrongly. Tom's days were days of splendor and exultation to him, but his nights were season of horror. Injun Joe infested all his dreams and always with doom in his eye. Hardly any temptation could persuade the boy to stir abroad after nightfall. Basically, this boy who used to sneak out all the time and cause mischief, you couldn't hardly get him to leave when it was dark outside because he was so afraid. Poor Huck was in the same state of wretchedness and terror, for Tom had told the whole story to the lawyer the night before, the great day of the trial. That's where he was that night, why he got home so late. And Huck was sore afraid that his share in the business might leak out yet, notwithstanding Injun Joe's fight had saved him the suffering of testifying in court. Basically, because Injun Joe had got up and ran away, uh, Huck was not needed to testify because Injun Joe basically admitted his fault by doing that. The poor fellow had got the attorney to promise secrecy, but what of that? Since Tom's harassed conscience had managed to drive into the lawyer's house by night and wring a dread tale from lips that had been sealed with the dismalest and most formidable of oaths, Huck's confidence in the human race was well nigh obliterated. Basically, if Tom Sawyer, who had sworn with blood and sworn the most formidable and serious promises you could think of, if he was able to break those promises to go and tell the truth, then anyone in the human race could do the same. Daily Muff Potter's gratitude made Tom glad he had spoken, but nightly he wished he had sealed up his tongue. Half the time, Tom was afraid Injun Joe would never be captured. The other half, he was afraid he would be. He felt sure he could never draw a safe breath again until that man was dead and he had seen the corpse. Rewards had been offered, the country had been scoured, but no Injun Joe was found. One of those omniscient and awe-inspiring marvels, a detective, came up from St. Louis. He moused around, shook his head, looked wise, and made that sort of astounding success which members of that craft usually achieve. That is to say he, quote-unquote, found a clue. But you can't hang a clue for murder. And so after that detective had got through and gone home, Tom felt just as insecure as he was before. The slow days drifted on, and each left behind it a slightly lightened weight of apprehension. So Tom is incredibly nervous that Injun Joe is going to be found, or that Injun Joe is going to come and find him and kill him for uh, making him, I mean, because Injun Joe had that in the bag. He was, nothing that happened to him was going to be Now Injun Joe is a wanted fugitive.